The sannyasis are giving the classes. It is a whole class in and of itself. But then, huh? What? Ten more minutes of tape. What should we do? Who's in charge here? It would be a rush if we did another class. He's the pujari. Or will somebody talk to one of the sannyasis? For another class? Yeah. You mean to replace their class? It would have to be a replacement. Okay. I will if somebody lets me. Huh? Yeah. All right, then I'll rush through it. And Prashad is ready. Okay, we'll resume at uh, three or whenever you can mosey back. Jaya Vishnu Pada Paramahansa Pripaji Kachaya Jastava Siddhi Shri Shima Shiva Bhakti Varanta Nanda Sai Mahaja Kija Nachadeva Purushta Vishnu Pada Stava Siddhi Shri Shima Shiva Bhakti Priyanka Shiva Vasai Mahaja Kija Shiva Bhakti Siddhanta Sai Siddhi Goshari Purupada Kija Shiva Bhava Kumashara Spavaji Mahaja Kija Shri Satchira Nanda Bhakti Varanta Kumki Jai Shri Vaishnava Sarva Jagannatha Spavaji Maharaja Ki Jai Rupanana Guru Vaga Ki Jai Shri Gauravananta Chari Shalabhadari Bajana Sankarabha Ki Jai Shri Sama Chakabhari Thakur Ki Jai Shri Nautam Shri Nima Shamananda Kalu Chai Ki Jai Shri Krishna Skaraj Vashanada Vaga Ki Jai Shri Rupsalata Matavadana Shri Jiva Vapala Patadas Ramana Sadhva Sami Prabhu Ki Jai Namacharya Shivali Das Thakur Ki Jai Shri Sripta Nidara Mandari Shri Gopar Shri Dabhindi Ki Jai Prem Sago Shri Krishna Chaitanya Pramantya Nanda Shri Dvaita Gadadha Shri Vasudeva Vakta Vindi Ki Jai Shri Antijai Maya Pusamantya Ji Kaju Ji Kaju Ji Kaju Ji Vitu Ji Chana Ji Guru Tama Ji Kuju Ji Pabhi Dashi Nava Ji Kwan Ki Jai Shri Shri Hari Krishna Gaur Gauri Gaur Gauri Gandhari Sivanani Ki Shri Pajmanu Dhani Ki Jai Dara Subhamani ki jai, Shri Shankuni Radhikani Tosi Bhakti Jumani Bhamadevi ki jai, Jagannath Pavale Subhaji Sudarshan Prabhu ki jai, Bhakti Prabhu Shri Prabhu Maharaj ki jai, Bhakti Vigyami Nasana Kari Shri Nishuna Bhavani ki jai, Charadam Charasana Pradaya Charavachari ki jai, Akramatra Shri Chaitanya ki jai, Varanani Sakamatsumar ki jai, Shri Harina Sankirtan ki jai, Samayata Bhakta Rindi Ki Jai Gopi Nandi Hari Om Ananda Gyanam Timiram Dasya Gyanam Jana Sadakaya Chaksoram Manitam Yena Tasma Sri Gurave Namo Gurave Gaura Chandraya Radhikaya Itudale Krishna Krishna Bhaktaya Tadha Bhaktaya Namo This is um, the second shorter part of this morning's longer part of the um, discussion on how Srila Gurudev created so many wonderful um, manifestations of the spiritual world, just as Srila Prabhupada did in his, during his manifested time. 
discussed this morning the. Does anybody know uh, Leslie Garston, Malika Gossi, or Shikani Gossi, or Gossi, or Leo I know they'll leave the Saki from the last one. No, Here. these are the people that run the Church and Ananda Swami Tex. Place up the you got here. Yeah, He's standing in front of you. Okay, thank you. I'm sorry for the emergency. Okay, thank you. So this morning we discussed the Seva Kunj painting, the four Munjeri's paintings, Gornatai, Venu Geet, the Gita Govinda drawings, the Gita Govinda paintings. And lastly, we'll be discussing now the Govardhan paintings. That is, paintings or drawings of Govardhan Lila, which were done for the Giridhari Gaudiyamat palatial temple at Govardhan in Vrindavan. It started about two years ago at that Govardhan temple. Gurudev told me that the palace was so, already so much developed, but there was still work to be done. He told me he was planning to have about 30 or so bas reliefs that is three-dimensional paintings. You um, carve or make stone on the wall and mold it into pictures. And then you paint it and they become three-dimensional pictures on the wall. And there, some of them were five feet by 10 feet or 15 feet, very, very large. So unexpectedly, Gurudev called me one day and said that the Bengali sculptor who sculpted and painted the bas reliefs for the Rupsanatan Gaudiyamat and Sri Keshavji Gaudiyamat in Mathura, that person was uh, going to sculpt Govardhan Lila. Inside, he himself sculpted the same Chaitanya pastimes and Krishna pastimes as he did in Vrindavan and Mathura. And in this temple was added Ramalila. But because they weren't familiar with the um, Gurudev's mood in what Govardhan Lila should look like, he wanted us to do the line drawings and then turn the line drawings over to the sculptors for making three-dimensional. And it was my understanding that they would also do the painting, so we would just provide the references. He said, you have to hurry because we only have a few days before the sculptor is coming. So we had the previous year, uh, under Pro Gurudev's guidance, and coming out from his heart using myself and about five or six other inexperienced artists as his paintbrushes and pencils, the Gita Govinda drawings had come out to his satisfaction. So uh, with a little more confidence, we began the drawings for Govardhan. He told me to write a list of what I found in the Braj Mandala Parikrama book and then go over it with him. So when I did, he accepted some, he rejected some, and then he added his own for some total of about, from 20 to 25. And then he said he wants series, triplets, and um, in twos. That is, any pastime having three pictures, like in the Christian um, art world, they have three pictures showing the story. So sometimes three, and sometimes two. So then Manjuri and myself and a few other uh, artists 
began the drawings. And before we did, well, I showed him the first drawing just a few days later of Hanuman carrying Govardhan, because the first the beginning of Govardhan Leela is how did Govardhan end up in Braj from where he was before. So Gurudev didn't like our picture of Hanuman. So he himself posed for Hanuman. He shouldn't be as a standing and flying, but like reclining and with his arms up that way. So a couple of the artists, all these, most of these uh, pictures are done by a um, group of two or three or sometimes even four artists, and most totally inexperienced, but Gurudev empowered them. I'm hoping that all of you who are very far away would kindly come and sit here, and if you need to s sit in chairs, you're more than welcome to bring your chairs right up here. And if the people who don't need chairs could come close, leaving a little aisle for Mahaprabhu in the middle, then everything, and if the people can, who are not sitting on chairs can come closer so that the chair people can come closer. Can you? Can you come closer? Rukmini? I just don't want to... No, you can stay on this side and it won't bother him. Okay. How's that? Good. So when I was beginning to show him the pictures, as I mentioned this morning, when I was first starting the Gita Govinda drawings, and he was, uh, he's fully conscious of everything. I want to tell one story that happened in Australia so you can get the idea of what goes on when he seems to ignore somebody or act disgusted with somebody or that you're the last person in the world he wants to see as many of us have experienced all those varieties. In Australia in 1997 um, as you know there's always propaganda from certain institutions that if you go see Narayan Maharaj you'll go to hell you'll never be able to come to our temple and Prabhupada rejects you. So in 1997, that was going on. So people were coming, though, with some reticence. And one husband and wife couple came. And the wife fell in love with Gurudev immediately. And he was giving her attention. And the husband was very, um, very, very hesitant and didn't want to get involved. So he kept giving attention to the wife and she kept uh, being very open and uh, receptive to Gurudev and he was standoffish and Gurudev was giving her attention. Now every day he kept getting more and more interested but Gurudev kept giving attention to the wife and then he started becoming frustrated that Gurudev is not giving me attention <laughs> and not talking to me and by the end of it he was screaming in his mind, why don't you give me some attention? I want your attention. I'm interested. And then Gurudev just turned to him at the very end and said, I'm working on you. <laughs> so it looked like he was totally ignoring him. <laughs> so when Gurudev seems to not be aware that we're here or that you're the last person in the world he wants to see or he looks at everybody and smiles and you, he just, you don't exist. This is all very intentional because, as mentioned this morning, the stirrer of the butter who's making ghee knows exactly what he's doing to make beautiful golden uh, eternal ghee by stirring the butter and all the butter is feeling is that um, I'm suffering and I'm boiling and so many anartas are coming out, but it's all coming from the supreme stirrer. So, um, when we started showing him the drawings, I showed him a drawing that uh, took a very long time to do. I, unfortunately, I don't have the ink drawing here, but those of you who come to Houston, we'll, we're going to show slideshows of these drawings so you can see it there. Um, very elaborate of Don Gatti, Krishna challenging the gopis that, I'm sorry, but I have to tax your yogurt 
because I'm the owner of this area, Vrindavan and Govardhan, and we always tax people who are bringing their goods. And it's very beautiful, joking pastimes. So I tried to show it to Gurudev, and he, when he was walking out of his room, of his uh, mature temple on the roof to go down to give class, and he, I put it right in front of me. He said, I can't understand what these lines are. And every time I try to show him, it's like, no time. I have time for everybody else but not you. And at the end of class, um, those of you who are in uh, Matra know that sometimes at the end of class, after the, after the class, a kirtan begins, and then many devotees walk up to him, and they whisper things back and forth. You have to go real close to him, because the kirtan is so loud. So I had a very important question about this project that he asked us to do, and I went to speak to him, and he just went, <laughs> so that everybody could see that I wasn't wanted to be talked to. So it's a matter of, so should I lose my enthusiasm, or should I know that Gurudev uh, wants us to be so close to him, like water and wetness, or fire and its heat and light, that he doesn't want material impediments to get in the way. But he wants us to become one in heart with him, as he always asks, always orders, Guru Mukha Padma Vaikya Chitete Kodiya Aikya. When will my heart be the same as the words and the heart of my Gurudev? So whenever he does things like that, it's all for the stirring, and it's all for us to get uh, disgusted with ourselves being so attached to uh, his externals, our externals. When, uh, in 1993, I admitted to Gurudev that I seem to spend half of my day worrying that people are judging me, and I spend the second half of my day judging others. So what am I going to do about it? So Gurudev said, I don't have time for all these things. I'm too busy chanting the prayers of Srila Narottam Das Thakur and uh, Srila Bhakti Vinod Thakur. In other words, that's the process out. Then we won't have time for the mental life. So, everything that Gurudev does with us is totally conscious and for that purpose. It came from that realm, maddened in Prem, uh, in Gopi Bhav, and what he came for is to make us maddened also. He taught us the song, Pramada Madana Leela Kandare Kandare Te Rochetam navajanur dandam asminam andam Iti kilakalanartam lagna kasta dayor me Nijanikati nevasam dei govardhatam As this is the subject of Govardhan. O Govardhan, you're always in uh, pramada, always in the highest exalted transcendental ecstasies, maddened and intoxicated by Krishna Prem. Why? Because 24 hours a day, you always have, you always witness the pastimes of Radha and Krishna as they are transpiring and as they are perspiring in your caves and kunjas. Nobody laughed, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, where he's giving us and teaching us, as Prabhupada did and as our Guru Prampara does, give us all these beautiful songs to become like them. Therefore, whatever he does is coming from that place, and whatever he does to us is because he wants us to go to that place and serve him with such intimacy that it's one in heart. In that realm, in the Govardhan in that realm, just like we're having the Govardhan festival tomorrow. Okay, timely. So, in that realm, uh, Krishna and Radha and all their associates uh, have massive book-length conversations just by an exchange of a momentary glance. They know exactly the book-long speech that the other person wants to give. So that's what Gurudev wants us to bring us to. So he makes, just like all those people who wanted to, what did they want to do in the Jewish religion, Isha Prabhu? They wanted to build a skyscraper up to God? Tower of Babel. So he made them speak all kinds of different languages, so that they would fight, so that they would, so that they would fight with each other. 
not understand each other and become frustrated. Similarly, uh, our acharyas simultaneously want to give us the taste of that realm and show us the frustration of this realm. So whenever he does that, it's fully conscious. In fact, in um, Holland in 1996, his first world tour, he said, why are you going to astrologers? I can simply look at your forehead and tell you, te tell you 10,000 lives, past and future. If a Vaishnava doesn't know every single thing that's going on in your mind, he's not a Vaishnava. So don't think I'm not always with you. I'm always with you and I always know everything about you. And he wants us not to engage him in our world, he wants to engage us in his world. So then uh, after a couple of weeks of that, uh, we kept going and engaged, uh, more artists came forward and helped with about 15 or 20 sketches. Then we brought those sketches to Gurudev and we were there with him and also the sculptor. And when he saw those, all the sketches of the pastimes, he was so pleased and he said, I have cheated you for this purpose. When he says cheated, he sometimes means tricked. I have tricked you means I've you know, done the stirring for this purpose, to bring out uh, the drawings. And then he was commenting what he likes, what he wanted changed. So, uh, now I'll show you the drawings as they came out and what the leelas are behind them. Can you hold it up? Yeah. This okay, Mahaprabhu? Yeah. Okay. This is uh, how Govardhan first came to Braj. There's two stories that's told in the Vedic literatures that happen in different yugas, different creations. One is Hanuman was helping Lord Ram to construct a bridge across the Indian Ocean to Lanka and everybody had to carry mountains to help create the bridge. So Hanuman found the mountain of Govardhan and he was carrying him to the ocean when all of a sudden there was an aerial voice which said, now Ram has already the amount of mountains and rocks he needs, now you can just leave everything where it is. So Hanuman put Govardhan down and it just so happened that it was Brudge where he put him. He was flying over Brudge. So knowing that Govardhan would be very unhappy to not be engaged in Lord Ram's service, Hanuman went to Ram and Ram said that he should be blessed that when I'm Krishna in Brudge, he will play on my very breasts and perform I'll perform, I'm sorry, I will play on his very breast and perform all kinds of pastimes there. So here in this picture, you see Hanuman uh, blessing, giving benedictions to Govardhan that Krishna will surely come and play on you. And Govardhan was very pleased. And you can see, just as there are faces on uh, Shelagram Shilas, so if you look carefully, there's a face here. And Govardhan is very pleased. And the sculptor also sculpted in that face. You can see that when you're, when you're in Govardhan. Hmm? Another history is Pulatsya Rishi wanted to perform bhajan in Kasi. And he went to Dronal, Dron, how do you say it? Dronachala. Dronachala who is the father of uh, Govardhan and asked for his son to carry to Kasi because there there wasn't so much beautiful lush forests and flowers and fruits and Govardhan was full of such uh, opulence. So Govardhan agreed to come. He said, as long as you don't put me down, I agree to be carried by you. Wherever you put me down, there I stay. So it just so happened that when he was walking over Brudge, he had such mystic powers that he was very easily able to carry him. But when he was walking through Brudge, 
he had a call of nature. And so he had to put Govardhan down for a moment and uh, become clean, come back. And this time he couldn't lift Govardhan at all. So he became so angry. Govardhan said, I kept my word. He became so angry that he said, I curse you then that every day you will become less and less in size by a mustard seed. So Govardhan didn't mind taking the curse. He was just happy to be in the land where he would become the playground of Radha and Krishna. So here, I'm sorry, he or she, depending on your uh, card. <laughs> Um, the relief work was get this type of detail? Um, the relief work did not do all the detail. It did the major things. And then by painting on whatever flat surface remained, all the detail would be there. So here, Palestri Rishi is cursing Govardhan. And you, again, you can see the face of Govardhan in the trees and leaves and spaces. So now Gurudev explained that it's true that Govardhan is decreasing by one mustard seed size daily, but not because of the curse, but because of his feelings of separation from Krishna and his associates. Now, inside the temple, the Bengali sculptors did a traditional uh, Krishna lifting Govardhan hill. So why did Gurudev have us do another one on the outside of the temple, because this one is in his mood, and with his specific details. This shows all the rasas. That is, here's Krishna lifting the hill, but his mind is on Srimati Radhika, and that is why he arranged for the lifting of Govardhan Hill, and Indra's becoming angry, and sending down all the rain, which was as sharp as arrows and as thick as pillars and the water became so deep that you could not distinguish between a high land and a low land. So everyone went and prayed to Krishna and he lifted the Govardhan hill. But his inner motive, as is the inner motive of all of his activities, not only in Vrindavan but outside as well, is to um, fulfill his desires to please the gopis and particularly Radhika and to fulfill his desires to associate with them. So here's Radhika and Krishna absorbed in each other and as you notice if you'd come close or you can see on the wall paintings if you come for Kartik, Krishna's flute is dropping from his hands and his Chatter, Pitambara is also dropping from his shoulders and he's losing his balance because he's getting the glance of Srimati Radhika. So you'll notice that just behind him is Madhu Mango, uh, Lord Krishna's funny Brahmana friend, here. Oops. And Madhu Mango is leaning over and pinching Krishna on his side and saying this is no time to faint. What will happen if you're fainting now and you're supposed to lift the Govardhan hill? So he brought Krishna back to alertness. And Mother Yasoda and the um, Nanda Baba there in Vatsalya Bhav in full anxiety that the mountain shouldn't hurt Krishna, their son, who's an ordinary boy. Then the gopi is, you see, she's looking up because she's threatening to curse Govardhan that if you fall even one drop onto Krishna and hurt him in any way, then by my glance, I curse you to become like powder. And the coward boys are thinking, Krishna may be having a hard time, so we should help him by holding up Govardhan with our sticks. And the coward men are thinking, Krishna's not lifting the hill. Lord Narayan is lifting the hill because he's pleased with Nanda Baba's austerities. 
So in this way, this is Govardhan in Gurudev's mood. Then there's a triptych. Then there's a triptych. Is this okay for you, Mahaprabhu? Um, really, no. It's, um, okay, we'll keep it here. To get any detail while it's moving. Okay, can can everybody see this, or anybody can switch seats if you want? So this is one of the triptychs that Srila Gurudev requested. First is Jalkeli Lila, Radha and Krishna and the gopis splashing in Radha Kund. And sometimes they defeat Krishna and sometimes Krishna defeats them. But usually Krishna defeats them. So after that, they tell him that that was a game of brute force. And that's why you can win, because you have, you're so strong because you're just a cowherder. But now let's engage in some other games which require intelligence, like dice and other things, word games. And then certainly the gopis win. <coughs> then, this is the second of that triptych. After... Radha and Krishna and the gopis come out from the water. The uh, sakis and manjaris engage in drying them. Here you see their clothing is on the line. And all of these pencil sketches were shown to Gurudev for his approval or something changed. And so they're dressing and drying Radha and Krishna. And the manjaris are coming out of the water and helping to dry and dress Radha and Krishna and the gopis. These pastimes are described in Govinda Lilamrita and Krishna Bhavanamrita. This is the third in the triptych where Radharani and her sakis decorate Krishna with ornaments and uh, unguent designs of uh, floral designs and other designs on his body. And Radharani makes a crown, very beautiful crown of flowers. <coughs> you can imagine how beautiful that crown will be if it's made by her personal hand. And others are putting on ankle bells. And these, one other devotee, a new disciple from Gurudev, in, um, who lives in Govardhan, who was born in Govardhan, did the background. We gave just a very quick pencil sketch, and then he did the elaborate ink drawing. And then another devotee, also inexperienced in this realm, but empowered by Gurudev, a uh, lady from Russia, she put on the uh, elaborate um, design work and jari on the gopis. What is a triptych? Three means three. So you have a story in three parts. And so there were three drawings. Then this, uh, Gurudev always laughs when he tells this story, and he laughed when he saw the drawings. Uh, Radharani went to pick flowers at Kushima Sarovara. Kushima means flowers, and Sarovara means lake. So by that lake, Radharani went to pick flowers, and Krishna, knowing in advance that she was coming, by so many means, by uh, messages sent, as we mentioned this morning, by handmade ink of pressing flowers, making their own ink, and writing on lotus petals. Somehow Krishna got the message that Radharani was going there. So he thought he would play a trick, and that is, he sat on the branch knowing that she would pick flowers from that branch. And so the branch was weighted down. When she was in the middle of picking a bunch of flowers, Krishna jumped off the branch, and so there was no more weight on the branch, and so the branch flew up, and Krishna jumped down, and Radharani was hanging on to the bunch of flowers, and she flew up, and she was crying out for help. Unfortunately, I don't have the third line drawing here. We'll show it in Houston. 
And the third one is when uh, Krishna catches Radharani and she's pushing him away saying, I don't want to be caught by you. And he's laughing and all the gopis are clapping. <laughs> then this is another Kushama Sarovara pastime where Radharani is picking flowers and Krishna comes along and says, who are you? who's stealing the flowers of my Vrindavan. So Radharani says, what do you mean, who am I? You don't know who I am? And Krishna said, if I knew who you were, would I be asking you who you are? <laughs> Just as young boys and girls look for any excuse to speak about anything, sweet nothings, as they say. So where does this come from? As Gurudev said the other night, Janmad Yasi Yataha, everything has its origin in the absolute truth. But here, all pastimes are full of misery, ignorance, and temporality. There, everything is full of bliss, knowledge, and eternity. So then they have a lover's quarrel, loving quarrel, Prem Kalaha, as to who Vrindavan belongs to. And this is actually just an excuse for Krishna to glorify Radharani. Because he was telling the gopis that Radharani always steals the beauty of my forest. In fact, her whole existence is a thievery of the beauty of my forest. Now, my beautiful banduka uh, fruits, red, beautiful banduka fruits, sweet, succulent, now looks pale in comparison to her lips because she's stolen the beauty of that fruit. And the lotus flowers all look dim because she's stolen the beauty of her lotus flower, my lotus flowers, and put them on her eyes. So in this way, in various ways, he's glorifying Srimati Radhika. Then, I'm not a triptych now coming up, but a two-part pastime. This is no Karlila where Krishna disguises himself as a boatman in other garments and it's evening time. Once I told Gurudev uh, about ten years ago that my chanting is so dry, it's just like boring, I just chant just to have it get done. So then he said, you should start thinking of these pastimes like no Karlila while you're chanting. So, uh, the boatman says to the gopis, I see you need to take your goods across the river so you can just come on my boat. Of course, the boat is very old, but I'll do the best I can. So there's no other boat in sight. So the gopis get on his boat, and then in the middle of Manasi Ganga, Manasi Ganga is made by the Manasi, the mind of Krishna. He collected all the waters from all the holy places and brought them to Vrindavan to satisfy his parents who wanted to take bath in all the holy places. So in the middle of the river, all of a sudden Krishna says he starts putting his weight side to side on the boat and making the boat rock and he said, your um, containers of yogurt are too heavy. Our boat will sink. You have to throw them overboard. So. Oh, we have to start. We have to start Kirtan. Okay, so I'm just going to zip through everything. This is Kirtan. Okay, so we'll zip through everything in the next five minutes and we'll continue in Houston with slideshows and everything big. Because Gurudev will be very displeased if he doesn't see a real live singing Kirtan. So here in the boat, you can see the um, yogurt pots are being thrown off. And then he said, Your ornaments are too heavy. We're going to sink, you have to take them off. And the whole purpose that Krishna arranged this boat Leela was to get Radharani to be afraid so that she would hold on to him for dear life. And when Gurudev saw that, he was laughing. This, this now is a bas relief of about 15 feet um, in the back corridor of the Govardhan temple. The devotees who were running the guest house uh, of the Govardhan temple were suggested by somebody to do elaborate um, advertising.
big, big posters and ads in hotels to advertise our Govardhan temple. So Guru, Gurudev said, no need for spending so much money or any money on advertising. The two ad big advertising factors which are going to make people throng to the temple is the wall paintings and the beauty of the deities. They're just so gorgeous, these deities. Now, unfortunately, I don't have the first picture, but the first one is Dangati, which I told you about, which Gurudev pretended he didn't want to see. And this is uh, Dani Vartan Kund, where... In one second. <laughs> Thanks. Um, Dani Vartan Kund, where the gopis retaliate, and um, they wait for a time when Krishna is only with a few friends, then thousands of gopis box the ear of the friends, and... Um, Force Krishna to be dressed, the badger girls do it every year. Force Krishna to be dressed in gopi dress, and then tie, hold his hands behind his back, put a yogurt pot on his head, throw the uh, rock at the pot, and then all the yogurt falls on Krishna's head and everybody claps and laughs. What happens next is that Krishna, full of dripping yogurt, falls at the feet of Srimati Radhika, and Gurudev said, yes, Kalyana Bhavatu. Kalyana Bhavatu, Mangala Bhavatu, all blessings to you. I forgive you, and now that you've surrendered, Krishna is surrendering to the Queen of Vrindavan. And this is a uh, modern Anukut with um, uh, Madhavendra Puripat worshipping Giriraj Govardhan, who he found, who came to him in a dream and asked him to install him on the mountain. And here is Sri Sanatana Goswami, who at a very old age, was circumambulating the mountain, and then Giridhari himself came and said, no need to continue. I'm taking this rock, I'm making my footprint in it, and you can just circumambulate this rock four times. So uh, there are a few others that we don't have here. But in, uh, at, in Houston, we'll have also a big slideshow of the uh, wall paintings yeah. as they're developing. The actual ones? The actual ones. Okay, so we'll end here because there's now Kirtan, yes? Someone said there's three more slots available times for this. Yeah, on Sunday there's a whole day. Please. Okay, we'll see what happens then on Saturday and Sunday. Go up, Premanandi. Hare Krishna.